covalent molecules and why things dissolve. This is the second part on polarity and this is looking at the properties of different covalent molecules. This one is going to focus on solubility. So why do things dissolve in water? Why do things dissolve in general? So the basic principle is two things. There's two things that can dissolve. First of all, like dissolves like. What that means is polar things dissolve other polar things. And this is to do with the slight charges that they have. Because polar molecules have slight charges on either side of the molecule, what they can do is form bonds with other polar things and that makes, well, that allows things to dissolve. Okay, so the main thing, polar things will dissolve other polar things. So if you're looking at why something dissolves and it's a covalent molecule, you'll look at the polarity of it. The second thing that it can dissolve in a polar substance is some ionic compounds. Some ionic compounds will dissolve because ionic compounds, as you know, are charged particles. They're made up of cations and anions. Let's look at, for example, the water molecule here. <coughs> Excuse me. The water molecule, as we know, is a polar substance. It has a slight negative end here and it has a slight positive end over here. What can happen for an ionic compound is that when it dissolves, it splits up into the anions and cations. The cation gets attracted to the oxygen area, the negative area, and the anions, they get attracted to the hydrogen area, the positive area. What this will do is if this attraction is stronger than the attraction holding the salt or the, the, um, the ionic compound together, we get this thing of dissolving. Depending on what will dissolve depends on the force holding the thing together. That's for ionic compounds. Depending on the force holding the ionic compound together, it may or may not dissolve. So a strong force holding the cations and anions together in an ionic compound will probably not dissolve. But if you're looking at a weak force or a weaker force holding the ionic compound together, it probably will dissolve. Take for example these two things, salt, sodium chloride, and magnesium oxide. One of these will dissolve and one of them will not. Based upon your personal experience, you'll know that salt actually does dissolve. You've probably done it yourself when you're cooking. All right. Magnesium oxide, however, does not dissolve. We can actually explain why this happens due to the force holding these molecules together. Sodium is plus one because it's in the first group. Chlorine is negative one. So that means we have a a force between a positive and a negative, just a single positive here and a single negative here. Magnesium on the other hand, magnesium is two positive and oxygen is two negative. These are ionic compounds. So the force holding these magnesium oxide together is between a two positive and a two negative, almost um, four times that of your, so your sodium chloride here. So like dissolves like, first of all, if things are polar, they'll dissolve. Second of all, if some things are ionic, they'll dissolve. And the ionic um, compounds depend on the force holding the ionic compound together. The um, smaller the charge difference, the more likely it will dissolve in water. That's solubility. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense to you. Um, the main thing is these two dot points, like dissolves like, and some ionic compounds dissolve and why they dissolve or and how they dissolve is explained here, where the cation gets attracted to the slightly negative charge and the anion gets attracted to the slightly positive charge. The next thing we're going to look at, and I'll probably make a new video for this because it will make it easier, shorter videos make it easier for you to learn, apparently, um, is the melting points. And we're going to look at melting points in the next video.